In this video I'll be looking at a few different filters for the DJI Osmo Pocket 3. I'll be looking at filters from Junestar JSR, KNF Concept and Start RC. Just looking at the differences between them and how well they work and sort of how they work with the Pocket 3. Starting off we have the one of the Junestar filters. This is the ND64PL but they're all pretty similar. These filters are too big for the Pocket 3 to go to its normal sleep position when you turn it off. The Pocket 3 will actually go into its sleep position, but the filter sort of knocks against the edge of the gimbal as it's putting the head into its sleeping position, if so to speak. Um, and then this makes it quite hard to get the filter off and if you turn the Pocket 3 back on when the filter is on the head while it's in the sleep position, it won't work properly and um, you'll get an error. Uh, so they're not very good really. If you do use the June Star filters, you need to make sure that you take them off before you turn the Pocket 3 off. On to the next one. You can see this is one of the KNF filters and um, Photographing it on this reflective surface probably wasn't such a good idea to show this, but it is quite a bit thinner than the June Star filter. Uh, it may look a bit fatter from the reflection, but it is thinner, and these will go on the Pocket 3 and it will go into its sleep position no problem and come back out of it no problem with the filter still attached. Next, looking at the June Star Black Mist 1 8th filter. Again, it has the same problem as the NDPL filters of being too fat for the Pocket 3 to go into its sleep position properly. And next, looking at the Start RC NDPL filter. This one has no problem with the Pocket 3 going into the sleep position. Next, looking at one of the KNF ndpl filters you can see this has a little wheel that you can use to control the polarizing strength whereas if we look back at the jsr ndpl you'll see there's no way to control the polarization it's a fixed polarization and we'll look at what that means later in the video the start rc circular polarizing filter is very similar to the knf ndpls it has a filter ring that you can rotate to adjust the polarization. Next, looking at the KNF Vary ND, you can see it has markings for one to five stops of reduction. And onto the KNF Vary ND 32 to 512, you can see it has markings for five to nine stops of reduction. Um, both these have the little wheel that you can dial. There's no hard stops on it, so you can rotate past or less than the uh, marked stops. You'll also notice that as it gets darker, the stops get much closer together. Um, so, But again, these are thin enough that you can keep them on the Pocket 3, turning it off and on, and there's no problems. Next, looking at the magnetic solutions on these which is how they attach to the Pocket 3. The JSR filter has four small magnets, one in each of the corners. Looking at the one of the Start ND filters, you can see this has large magnets at each end. These are a lot more sticky than the June Star filters. It's not, you could think of it as a positive, but it actually means that the filters are very difficult to get off of the Pocket 3 once you've got them on there. Looking at a KNF filter, you can see the same thing and you have the same advantages and disadvantages of that. Their main advantage, I would say, is probably that they're easier to stack if you want to put multiple filters on the Pocket 3. But of course, if you do that, then you have the same issue where the Pocket 3 can't go into its sleep position properly. Next, looking at the cases, the JSR cases come with more slots in them than the number of filters that you're purchasing. 
So starting with this one, this is the Black Mist filter case, which you just buy by itself. And you can see in the case, there's slots for two more filters. And with the NDPL, you can see there's four filters in there, but there's space for eight. That's quite good in that you can put all your filters in the single case. Well, depending on how many you have. Um, the KNF filters, by contrast, the cases only have space for the ones that you actually bought that came in the case. So looking at this one here, this is um, for the set of four NDPLs. And so there's only space for four filters in there. Similarly, if you buy uh, just a single filter like the Black Mist, then the case only has one in it. The nice thing about the KNF cases compared to the JSR ones is that they're all the same size. They do also hold the filters a bit more firmly, I would say. So sort of if you turn it upside down, the filters are less likely to fall out um, and sort of generally a better quality feel about them. And lastly, this is my own custom case, which is just a standard sort of camera filter case with a bit of magnetic material in it and then the filters just put on top of it. Uh, the, again, because the all the filters in this what, um, image are StartRC and KNF ones, and because of the strong magnets in, they can actually be quite difficult to remove from this case, despite the magnetic material in there not actually being very strong. Doing a quick studio comparison of the filters and starting off with no filter. We then move on to the JSR Black Mist. You can only see an ever so slight difference in blooming around the light, but it is only one eighth. Comparing to the KNF Black Mist one quarter, you can see that's slightly stronger. Switching back between the different ones so you can see the difference. Next, moving on to no filter again so you can see the reflection. And then looking at the start RC CPL, you can see the reflection in the frame is removed quite a bit. Looking at one of the JSR NDPLs, you can see the reflection in the frame is not reduced at all. If we then rotate the filter 90 degrees, we can see that it does start to cut out the reflection, showing that is the polarization in the filter is sort of in the incorrect orientation for normal landscape shooting. And um, with the Pocket 3, you would always be using it in a landscape orientation because even in the portrait mode, it's just the camera is still in the landscape orientation. To get it to work like this, you'd either need to mount the filter rotated, which means it's not going to stay on very well, or you would have to mount it normally and hold the Pocket 3 at a right angle, which would be a bit odd, but could be done if you really wanted. If we then look at the other JSR and DPLs, you can see that they all have the same problem. Next, looking at the KNF NDPL, you can see that this actually works and does not have the problem. And just comparing to the JSR NDPL, you can see the difference. Looking at the other KNF NDPLs, you can see that they all work well as well. Again, this is obviously with the filter ring rotated on the KNF ones to give the maximum polarization effect, which you cannot do with the JSR NDPLs. Next, looking at the Vary ND from KNF, this is the 2 to 32. First of all, at one stop, and at two stops. Three stops of light reduction, we start seeing a little bit of darkening. Four stops, we see a color difference, but I did have the Pocket 3 in auto white balance, so it may be something to do with that. But we can see it is getting quite a bit darker in the corners now. And finally, at five stops, we can see there's quite a lot of darkening 
and you, I don't think you would really want to use it at this strength. Switching to the KNF Fairy ND 32 to 512 at five stops, which is the minimum on this one, you can see it's a lot better than five stops on the ND 2 to 32. But we do get the same problem as you can see moving up. When we get to seven stops, you can see there's quite a bit of darkening in the corners happening. Eight stops is worse and nine stops is really bad. When we compare the KNF Fairy NDs to the Start RC Plain NDs, we can see with the Plain NDs there is no problem with darkening. That's just a problem that you do get with Fairy NDs. So it's not specific to KNF. That will be the same with all of them. Um, the KNF may be quite good as far as these things go. And we'll just do a quick comparison here between the KNF Fairy ND at each of its stops and the Start RC Plain NDs. And you can see with each one what the difference is. Looking at the JSR NDPL filters again, using them outside for a more real world situation just to show how they don't work because the polarization is in the wrong direction. If we look, compare it to no filter, you can see the only change between no filter and the NDPL is a slight change in the color balance the JSR seems to give a warmer image. If we now look at the KNF NDPL, you can see quite a big difference here. You get a darker sky as you would expect and sort of the clouds have a bit more pop to them as you'd expect with a NDPL filter. And again, looking at the Start RC CPL filter, you can see the same effects you'd expect from polarization where you can see the sky takes on a darker tone and the clouds, have, which gives more contrast with the clouds. And if we rotate the Pocket 3 by 90 degrees so that we're shooting in portrait orientation, now this is rotating the actual Pocket 3, not putting into portrait orientation, you can see that we do now get a polarization effect and the sky is darker just proving that the JSR NDPLs polarized in the wrong direction for practical use. Now we'll look at attaching the filters. This is the JSR filter, which has the smaller magnets on it. As you can see, it magnetically attaches to the front and goes on relatively easily. It does have wedge bits at the edge for removing it, but they're still very tricky to get hold of. Here I just remove it from the top and don't make use of those. The KNF filters have knurled edges, but it doesn't, again, it doesn't actually help much in getting a grip on them. The adjustment wheels also have knurled edges, but again, they're very difficult to turn. You can turn them a bit with your finger nail, but very difficult to get any sort of precise control over it and uh, make sure that you are actually turning it. Removing them, because of the stronger magnets, it can be quite tricky, especially if you're holding on to the gimbal with one hand. The DJI wide filter can be used on top of another filter, but as long as it's sort of quite a thin filter, kind of. We'll see in a minute how well this works in real life, but it's very difficult to get it sort of on there with the minimum of vignetting because the DJI filter for some reason will only stick on at an angle something to do with the sort of orientation of the magnets in it I think so can you use the DJI wide angle adapter with filters the answer is not really you can stack the wide angle adapter on top of a filter, but it's very difficult to use it without vignetting. 
here on top of the start rc polarizing filter you can see there's quite heavy vignetting in the bottom left corner and light vignetting in the top right corner If we try the wide angle adapter on top of the Start RC ND8, you can see we've got really bad vignetting where it's mechanical vignetting in the top right corner. It's completely cut off. There's no way you can brighten the corner to get that back. And we're also seeing a bit of vignetting in the bottom left corner. So although you can technically use filters with the wide angle adapter, in practice, it's not really something you would want to use. I'm not going to go into the details of what ND polarizing and blacklist filters are. There's loads of other videos already out there on those if you're interested in what the filters are for. This video is more to look at these different filters and see how they compare. If that's what you were looking for, then I hope you found this video helpful.